there we are. Well, hello there, everybody. As I'm rushing to get stuff sorted out before the start of this. Welcome to round one. Of the GRT. GR4. Season two. Three, four, five, six. Season three. Round one at the glorious Bathurst. I am your host yet again for the season, Mr. Mashed Potato, coming at you live on GRT Esports. Should be a lot of fun. Now bear with us while I get some notes up for a second. As Mr. Rob C joins the lobby, Let's bear with us one second. chat. Looking forward to another glorious season of GR4s. I know I am. Now the, see, now the format is very similar to that of last year's but with a few tweaks. So there is still going to be throughout the, the course of this season there is still going to be one oh, as we start the qualifier. It'll take a time for a few, to set a few laps, so I'll have some time. So there is going to be one sprint race, and one feature race. Same as last season, however, you may not notice some of the car changes are not the same as last season, as we saw the 12 minute qualifier this time around. You may notice a pattern with some of these cars. There is no TTs, there's no front wheel drives, there's no Astons, there's no Jags. There's nothing like that. But, there is a lot of MR cars, and that is because this season of the GR4 League is ru running entirely. MR cars, so every MR GR4 car in the game, that is what the teams had to choose for for this season, this time around. So as you can see, as we have a look throughout the field, we have Sean in McGann, in a very pink, a very, very nice livery there, in the McGann. We also have Tiege. 
who is in the Porsche. And I will get to the teams in just a second. So haven't finished writing them down yet. Marmite, also in the Megane. They're very colourful livery as always. Kazi and Racer, both in the Ferraris, teammates this season. We also have Josh in the NSX. And Rob the, in the other Porsche up ahead. We have Rocketman, also in a Ferrari for this season. Very nice looking livery as always from Rocketman. We have Wrighton, who is also in the other Ferrari. JD in the other Megane. And then we have Jay and Gad, both rocking Porsches this season as well. Plastered Gary all over the side. And of course, let's not forget Mikey, who is currently in the pits in the other McGann there. So I will run through the teams in just a second. Sorry for missing anybody in chat, I'll catch up on that in just a second as I'm preparing some notes. Uh, we are missing one person at the moment the ever late as ever Hibby we are missing at the moment I'm not sure if he is not able to race today but that is the only person we're missing today and it doesn't look like anybody's come forward for the additional special guest slot today so We will have, throughout the season, we will have one special guest soft as well as any subs that want to appear. For this season. So the rest of the guys have already come across the line to start their flying laps now. See what kind of times it looks like. Tej and Marmite are the first ones that are going to be crossing the line here. Let's keep it on Marmite and Tej just to come over the mountain section. Ooh, Tej has got it wrong to the mountain section. It's really unfortunate there for Tej. Let's have a quick replay of that. Ah, never mind. Mustn't have pressed said. My bad. See the rest of the guys coming through the shop now. See a big group of cars here as well. Marmite and Tej look to have both backed off their laps as Marmite may have gotten it wrong as well coming across there. Both Marmite and Tej will have plenty of time to, though, to set more laps in this race. So as, as well as I said before, I will be bringing through the teams. The first team that we have this time around is Team Crazy. Same as last year, partners re-entering for Season 3, but I guess they will want me to read out the full title of their team as Racer comes close to the finish line. Team Crazy and Racer, school for kids who can't drive good and want to, want to learn to do other stuff good too, as he comes across the line to set a 114. Rog comes across the line to set a 113 as well, Marmite comes across the line to set a 220. 2.24 fatigue as well, unfortunately made that mistake and it looks like Sean also made a mistake on that lap there, setting at 2.26 the first runners across the line there. Looks like some guys there chose to pit in for a fresh set of tyres and hopefully they will get some good laps out here. But we will have some people coming across the line now. Jay on the back straight. Sorry, we have Gad on the back straight and Jay coming through your picture now. What lap time will he do in that Porsche? Great time from Jay, put him quicker than Rob by three tenths of a second there. Great job by Jay for getting their first 2.12 lap time of the weekend. Great stuff by Jay there. To put him in provisional first place. And we have the first member of Razor's Edge Racing making a glorious return as his teammate comes across the line now to set a 2.15, puts him in a provisional 4th place. Great start for Razor's Edge Racing here today. The mighty duo back at it again with Gad rocking in the Gold League. 
and J in the silver. This time around the league systems are still the same as last year so we also have the gold split and the silver split again for the season and all the drivers have been separated into their respective splits. Let's have a quick check of the other guys around. We also have Rob and Teach, the old partnership, back at it again for team the newly announced Team KRG which will sport Rob in the Gold League and Teej in the Silver Splits. Great to see the Mighty Duo back as well, rocking at the Porsche. Let's see if Rob can challenge Jay's time. He does, goes quicker by two tenths to put him at another 2.12.6, a great time there as well. So Marmite also comes across the line to take a provisional fourth place as well. Teej also with a great lap with a 2.15 as well. Oh, and look at all the times coming through now. 2.14 for Rocket Man and also a 2.14 for Right Line. Sean approves him lap with a 2.21. Josh also comes across the line and said his first lap with a 2.15.3. Positions chopping and changing by the second here. Let's see Marmite here for Team Prisma Chicken. And look at that JD, a great time coming across in third with a 2.13 there, which puts him on provisional third place. Great stuff by JD. The silver split winner. Last in the last season, of course, he was in the mighty TT alongside his teammate Rob C. Last season, a great performance, bringing up both first and second place. Let's see what both him and Marmite can do in the Magan this season, with JD in the gold split this season and Marmite in the silver. Now let's have a look at some of the other teams in this. Team Catastrophe Racing bringing up 5th and 6th place in this championship so far. Really, really good start by these guys. Ooh, this looks like Wrighton's just got a bit too hot and heavy and unfortunately just goes a bit too heavy into the braking zone there. Clips the grass and unfortunately ends up in the wall there. Doing the right thing though and waiting while his teammate passes and the rest of the guys pass through the circuit. Great stuff from Wrighton there, good sportsmanship. So we have Wrighton in the gold split for this season and Rocket Man in the silver for this season. And we have the man in seventh as well, Josh, who is new to this league, who is currently tailing Sean, getting a bit of slipstream back down the back straight as Mikey comes across the line with a 2.14, great lap from him, that puts him in provisional sixth place. Good start from him. So he will be paired up with Hippie for this season and they are the only ones rocking the NSX this season surprisingly as Kazi with a great time of the 2.12.5 and 5.9 just pipping out Rob's time there and puts him in for original first place good job there from Kazi as well as the guys coming across the line now will have one more chance or maybe two more one or two more laps to get back out there and hopefully set some good laps so we have Hippie in the gold split for their team this season and Josh, his teammate. And then it only bring leaves one team left on the field and I'm just going to be calling them Team Guinness Guinness. As you can see the Guinness plastered all over their car and that is the replacement for Team Scouts Racing from last season. That is Mikey and Sean, our last team in the season so far. Let's see if they can have any improvements this season. This season, I think, is going to be providing some great action, and it's also going to be telling up. It's going to be a lot closer this season, this time around, I think. Ah, Hippie's out there. No probs, Hippie. Hopefully, you can make it for the start of the sprint. So hopefully you guys are all well in chat. And ho 
hopefully you are all looking forward to the start of the brand new GR4 season. This proves to be even more fierce than last season. There's going to be a lot more competitive cars, a lot more competitive races, close racing. As Mikey mm. comes across the line there, but does unfortunately not able to improve on this time. Only 4,000s behind right in there mm. in seventh place. Let's see the other guys coming across the line now. Rob looks to be on a purple lap. Let's see if he can beat Casio out in front of him. Racer, really good time from him with a 2 12.8. Great time from Racer and puts him in provisional third place. Somebody's been practicing hard for this track and it really pays off this time around. Excellent time for Racer and he might even get one more lap to improve. But unfortunately it's not good enough because Rob in that Porsche comes across with a 2.12.3 pipping out both of the Team Crazy Racers in second and third. And JD also comes across the line there improving with a 2.13.5 puts him in a provisional fifth place. Good laps by these guys all around. Let's see if there's any other improvements as it looks to be a little bit of a twitch on the final call there and just see on the map. Ooh, as Rob goes a bit wide on his final lap there, it looks like Rob will not be able to improve on this lap as he pulls over to the side of the track and lets everybody else through. Really unfortunate there for Rob, just getting a bit too hot into that braking zone on the slightly worn tyres there. Good job by Rob though, he sets a great early pace and is on provisional pull for the moment, but can anybody behind him set a better lap now? Double quick further down, looks like Jay is also retired from this one as Marmite comes across the line and puts him into provisional 8th place in the other Magan for Team Prisma Chicken. Good job from him so far puts him up into provisional 8th place. Let's have a look, doesn't look like there's too many people coming across the line now, we have a couple of people in the pits, Gad and Josh both in the pits now, looks like their runs are done for the moment. Teach coming again through the mountain section, hopefully he can improve on the laps and just have a couple issues on a few of his hot laps there, hopefully he can improve for the last few races there, so we have Mikey coming across the line and he manages to get into 6th place on his final lap there, improving to a 2.14, couldn't quite scrape it at the 2.13s there, but it's enough to move him ahead of Wrighton at the end. As the other drivers look to be coming across the line now, we have Wrighton coming around the final corner here, will he be able to improve? Rocket Man improves with a 2.12.5, it puts him up into third place, a great lap from Rocketman, separating the two crazy racing drivers of Kazi and Racer. Great stuff by Rocketman, a really good lap by him, only three hundredths of a second behind Kazi. Great stuff from Rocketman there. Looks to me that might be, that is the end of the qualifying. Really competitive, some of the Ferraris look to be a dominant car. It's for Thirst bringing up the second, third and fourth positions. But it is Rob who takes pull for this early sprint race. Now, one thing I think is different about this season as well, is that the feature and sprint races are now reversed. So you can see that it is the, the feature race which will be first. And as you can see, off we go. As Rob looks to take an early lead, good start by them up top there. Was there going to be any incidents in the first corner? Looks like there's a few twitch in the background, but no, it looks like a good clean start from these guys. Great racing from these guys here. As we come up to the first of the mountain sections here, Rob just managing to retain his lead from Kazi. Will Kazi be able to slip a move down the inside there? No, Rob's too good on the brakes in that Porsche and manages to keep it around the first couple corners there. Coming into the mountain section now. Let's have a quick check back on the early 
in the, later in the field. You have Rocket Man in third racer just managing to hold his fourth position there. Ooh, as Rocket Man just gets a bit twitchy out of the exit coming around there. And let's race a bye with Jay Hot on Rocket Man's heels. Again, the Ferrari just a bit more un of the unstable cars. A very quick car in GR4, but it is a bit unstable. And he is on the medium tyre, so he will not have the grip of some of these guys on the first few laps. Opting to get rid of them tyres as early as possible. So you see both of the Prisma Chicken teammates battling it out. Looks like JD has unfortunately suffered from the lack of straight line speed in that Megane at Barthurst and is now down into 8th place. Unfortunate stuff, JD, but hopefully he can capitalise it on this race now. So he just gets it a bit wide coming out there and maybe tags the wall and that allows Mikey to go through on the inside there. Mikey is able to pass cleanly, although JD will have a slipstream coming up into the tight corners here. He is gaining back because of that slipstream on Mikey. Will he be able to mount a challenge back into the tight corners here? Coming down the back straight now. No moves look to be had there. As we see Guard in the background there. Awesome move, managing to move up in the 10th place despite starting a little bit further down the field. Tiege also managing to move up into 11th place. After his last, unfortunately, Josh not having a good start here. But looks, look at the battle between these guys at the back here. Josh managed to go up the inside of Sean, battling it out. Sean looks to actually have the run on the outside there, as Josh is on the softer, sorry, on the harder compound of tyres this time around for the early part of the sprint race. Hopefully, the long game will prove effective for Josh this time around. Let's have a quick check back up at the top end of the field. Looks like Rob is not benefiting from good straight line speed here compared to those Ferraris it is very good through the mountain section that Porsche but again once the Ferraris are in that slipstream there is very little Rob can do about it Ferrari isn't the fastest car in a straight line but it is sure a lot quicker in a straight line than that Porsche as you can see, both Racer and Rocket Man really putting pressure on Rob now through this mountain section. So you can see the beautiful Australian skyline there in the background as well. You can see all the guys getting very happy through the very very slippery downhill section there and you can see how close Racer is to Rob now he will be able to mount a challenge down this back straight let's have a quick look let's see if Rob is able to defend against Racer who will be coming very quickly down this back straight under two tenths now right on the back bumper of Rob Rob very good on the brakes there and manages to keep his position from Racer but he will be under challenge again on the front straight. Racer all over the back of Rob now. Just trying to just trying to force a mistake from the robot alien there. Good driving from Racer. Have a quick check further down the field as we see a battle for sixth place developing. We have a Wrighton in sixth place with Marmite and Mighty both hot on his heels in seventh and eighth place. Let's see if that Ferrari has enough power to still outmatch them on the straight. You can see Marmite actually managing to pull alongside right in there and he's just having a nose out in front. Will the McGann be able to keep it coming in at the first few corners of the mountain section? Right on the inside, not giving Marmite an inch. Good defensive driving there from Wrighton, not making it easy at all for Marmite to stick around the outside there. But this is where the McGann comes in, we're going through this mountain section. As you can see, Wrighton is also on the harder compound of tyres, whereas Marmite and Mighty are both on the softer rubber, but you can see the grip from the McGann there. As Marmite just managed to squeeze it up the inside of Wrighton, who, who had a slow exit there, and Mikey also manages to get through as well. 
tough close racing from all of these guys as Ryan goes slightly wide and that allows JD to sweep around the outside of that corner great job from JD there just biding his time Ooh, but JD also loses it coming out of there and a lot of people going into the wall in this early stage of the race there and that bring Ga brings Gard into the fight now Right, goes a bit wider that corner. Let's see if JD is on the softer tyre, whereas Gard is on the medium set of compounds. Let's see if the long game can play out for any of these drivers now, as we see start to see some separation between the front and the back of the field here. See JD there just up in front, just trying to mount challenge on right now. Right goes wide all over the track there. Can he manage to keep it together? Managed to keep a point in the straight line, but that really does hurt his time there as JD is now under attack from the guys behind him. JD just goes a bit wide again, not really managing to find the grip in that began just yet. And he's under attack from Gard now, is on the inside line. Tej looks to make the same move as well. JD looks to have backed out a bit there to try and get a better line. Oh, a bit of a slide there from Tej out of the first corner. Really not what he would have wanted there to keep himself in the fight. Unfortunately, he drops back more on that fresher set of compounds as well. He has used that first set of soft tyres as well. So he does unfortunately does not stand in good stead for the rest of this race. You can see a battle of the McGann's up in front as well. Marmite and Mikey both challenging for 7th and 6th place respectively. Marmite doing the better of these two at the moment in the teammates here. Really good job from Marmite just to keep that position as JD is all over the back of guard on them fresher set of tyres. And you can just see the tyre wear difference between the mediums and the softs between the Megane. You can see how well the Megane manages tyres compared to the Porsche. You can see right JD's tyres are actually so much better than the Porsches. Hey Random, how you doing buddy? Welcome to the stream. Hopefully these guys can provide some great racing for you this fine Saturday afternoon. As we can see right now, manages to mount an attack on that Magan. The lacking straight line speed of that Magan really is showing its ugly head yet again. And JD really not managing to make that thing work around this track here today. Question is as well, when will these guys be able to pit? When will the first guys come into the pits? As, as say that, as Jay now comes into the pits, is the first one to pit in this race. Half fuel in the cars now, and looks like Jay will be going for the two stop this time around as he switches them on to the softer set of tyres. Hopefully, his te teammate of Gad will let him pass and let him catch time up on the guys in front of him now. Let's have a quick look to see if Gard will let him past. Both go a bit wide on that corner. Just cutting through this mountain section now. Gard looks to be very handling that car very well through this mountain section, especially on their medium tyres. And he also seems to have a bit more fuel saved than his teammate of Jay behind him. No doubt these two are communicating with each other as we speak on different strategies. Will Jay and Gard let his teammate pass now? Coming down the downhill section. Good teamwork by Razor's Edge Racing as ever. And that allows Gard to defend from behind while his teammate Jay breaks away in front. As you can see, there's almost a one and a half second gap between the two now. And you can see just, ooh, as Jay just gets a bit hot going into the back straight there. 
all that time he's gained through there, unfortunately. Will count for naught, but looks like he's getting a boost from his teammate there. Jay is actually incredibly lucky not to have damage after that huge hit at Skyline. But let's have a quick look back at the leaders now of this race. As you can see, the Ferrari's tyres just starting to wear a bit more than the Porsches behind him. But, crucially, you can see that actually it has more fuel saved than the other guys around him. As we see, Rocket Man now coming to the pits for his probably maybe one and only stop. He seems to have saved a bit more fuel than the rest of these guys around him. So let's have a quick look and see what he goes on to. Will he go on with that set of soft tyres? Doesn't quite look to be a splash and dash for Rocket Man as he comes out in 10th place. As you can see, Jay is now well in front. The undercut working brilliantly out for Jay as he takes provisional lead over Rocket Man, who is now in 10th place. But Rocket Man has put more fuel in than Jay at this point of the race, so we'll have to see how that works out later on. As you see, both Mikey and Marmite now. Just coming through this uphill section, but look at the tyre wear on those Magans. They're on the soft tyres, and they look like they haven't even been touched. You can see how long the Magan can go on these on different sets of tyres. It is really extraordinary compared to all the other cars in GR4. So even though it loses out big time on the straights, it can go so much longer on one set of tyres compared to all the other guys around him. That is also due to the fact of the brilliant driving from Mikey and Marmite, who make that McGann work so well. We, we saw last time how well Marmite managed to, man managed to manage the McLaren, that's a tongue twister and a half, last season. And hopefully he can continue that performance here today. As you can see, there is a gap of 11 seconds to leaders in front who are also on the soft tyres. So you have a quick cut back to the leaders now. Rob right on the back of Kazi as we see Racer, Kazi's teammates, pull into the pits now. Racer might be going for the undercut as well. Kazi just goes slightly wide of that corner. Rob really trying to push that Porsche to its limits. Let's see where Racer comes out now. Looks to me have used more fuel than anybody around him. Looks like Gemini and the rest of the guys have actually managed to come out ahead as Gard also comes in the pits as well as Sean. It's a lot of fuel being taken by Racer there. And you can just see he comes out ahead of Rocket Man still, crucially, he was in fourth place behind him, Racer. So Racer has actually put in a full set of fuel as well as fresh medium, so it looks like he might actually be wanting to save a bit of fuel and go to the end of this race. As we see both Josh and Tej battling behind him. Josh going up the inside of Tej on their medium set of tyres there. Good overtake by Josh. Let's have a quick replay of that moment yet again. As you see Josh just getting a bit more of a run. The NSX quicker in a straight line than that Porsche. to be as simple as you like for Josh and just gets better on the brakes, managed to take the inside line. Yeah, good overtake from Josh there. As he's still running round on their medium set of tyres, he will be very quick come the end of this race as he is now on minimal fuel. He looks to might be able to pit on this, he will have to pit on this lap for fuel and tyres this time around. As you see Rob and Cathy, Rob much closer to Cathy this time around. Will Rob be able to mount a challenge into these corners? Looks like they both will be coming, maybe coming into the pits on this lap. Rob just playing it safe and not wanting to damage these two races here. Is any one of them coming to the pits? No, they opt to go for the halfway stage. So both these guys are going to be on empty. when they come into the pits. 
but you can see Jay is now in fourth place as he manages to overtake Marmite. Let's have a quick look and see if we can see a replay of that one. No, he's already ahead coming into the back on the back straight there, so great job from Jay to overtake Marmite and secure himself fourth place at the moment. So see Wrighton coming into the pits now, who was in seventh place, but crucially he will be on the softer compound of tyres for the last stage of this race. see Rob and Kazzy still battling away now. Rob actually managing to save a bit more fuel just sitting in behind Kazzy now with him being so close. But look at the tyres on Kazzy's Ferrari. They will actually be losing so much time to the guys behind them. You can see how much time that these guys are losing out as Mikey is now under 10 seconds behind Kazzy and Rob in front. And Mikey, you can see, is good for another lap on these tyres easily. He, he might even be able to get two laps out of this, depending on how good his fuel is. We'll have to see if Mikey is able to continue for two laps rather than one. But we'll have to see. As we see Jay setting some very good, fast and consistent laps. Yeah, we had two 2.13s for his first laps on the pits. Oh, he just gets it a bit wide coming out. Skyline really not his corner at the moment. Just getting a bit wide and tapping on that wall, which allows Marmite to close back up into his slipstream now. Marmite on very minimal fuel at this stage of the race, and he will need to come in for fuel this lap. As we have a look in front, these guys will have to pit on this lap. Looks to be good coming into the pits now. Rob just having a tiny bit less fuel than Kazzy, but crucially, where will this put them? So you see, Mikey is able to continue for one more lap. This will put him in provisional P1. But crucially, the guys behind them that behind them that have already pitted, where will they come out? As you see a couple of guys coming along the main straight there. Rocket Man in fourth place, who has managed to get ahead of Racer. Where did they come out ahead? Rocket Man is ahead of Rob. Kazi manages to come out in third place, just saving that bit more fuel. But crucially, they are on the harder compound of tyres now as JD manages to move up into 4th place but he is yet to pit as you can see he's running on very minimal fuel now but ah so he's going for the 2 stop this time around not a bad strategy so he looks to be using no my mistake he's used medium tyres from the get go it looks like and he will now be on the soft tyres. I maybe have wanted to pit maybe one more lap earlier to get on those soft tyres as soon as possible, as you can see from both Mikey and Marmite, who have now managed to come out in ninth place. And where is Mikey? Mikey is, oh, of course, he's still in first place because Mikey has not pitted yet. Marmite has pitted yet in the other, in the other Megane. So I have a feeling both Mikey and Jay will be pitting this lap. As we can see, the Razor's Edge Racing car sponsored entirely by Gary for this season. Look at the speed that Gemini is carrying compared to that McGann. Oh, Mike, it was a bit too defensive going into the last few corners there. Almost compromising his line as Jay managed to get into first place, coming into the pits now. Now, crucially, where will these two racers come out in front of the rest of the pack? The pit lane isn't very big at Barthurst, as they both come in on exactly two litres of fuel each. They will behind them, be behind the main pack, but these guys will be the fastest guys on track. As you see, Kazi on a full tank of fuel there, he will be going to the end of the race. Rocket Man as well, looks like he will, but he will have to pit once more. 
to get off of those medium tyres. Rob in third place behind them on the mediums. Looks like he will be going to the end as well. Racer behind him. Maybe have to pit for a quick splash and dash at the end of the race. But Mikey is able to come out in fifth place. Great drive from Mikey to come out in fifth place. And he's ahead of Gemini coming out of the pits there. With Gad, Gemini's teammate, close on their heels. But... As you can see, Gemini on the medium set of tyres now. He will have to use that as he just goes a bit wide, just on cold medium tyres there. Just goes a bit wide coming in to the second corner up into the mountain section here. See, Gara's teammate is on the softer set of tyres, but he looks like he will have to pit in the next couple of laps for a new set of tyres and more fuel. So unfortunately that will put Gad towards the back of the field there. So a quick look at the front of the field now. So you see both first, second, third and fourth still very close together now. But this will become a top three once Rocket Man comes into the pits again. If I were Rocket Man, I think I'd be wanting to pit now to get on off of them medium tyres as soon as possible. But let's see what he does here as we go along the back straight. Kazi over a second in front of these guys now. Just opting to save that bit more fuel going in the long gears. And Rob in hot pursuit of these guys behind him, managing to close a bit of time on the straight. Let's see who can manage these medium tyres better. But it's a great showing for Team Crazy here at the moment. The question is, will Racer be able to make the rest of the race? And the answer is no, as he pulls into the pits along with Rocket Man. Where will this put them? Racer on a lot more fuel, so he will be going for a splash and dash at this point of the race. And looks like these guys will both be putting on the medium tyres as the rest of the field come through along the pit straight. As Racer is not of the pits yet, Mighty takes third place, Gad in fourth place, and Gemini in fifth. Where is Racer? He comes out in 6th place there, in front of Rocketman, so Racer has managed to jump Rocketman in the pits because he's had a bit more fuel. Looks like Racer might have overfueled quite a lot there though, as he's almost put in, looks to be, between 80 and 90% worth of fuel for only 6 laps left of this race. Might have been a bit of a miscalculation for Racer there, but let's see how this how it works for the rest of this race. You can see Rocket Man not opting to put as much fuel in. So Racer, despite having a lot more fuel coming into the pits behind, he manages to get just ahead, but he may have put a bit too much fuel in now, and Rocket Man is all over the back of him. But they are on both fresh sets of soft tyres as Rocket Man really trying to make a move on Racer here, but compromises his own line and ends up going into the grass there. He's really trying to hammer that Ferrari round now, but he is only losing himself time. As we see JD in the background there, unfortunately, just getting a bit wide and going into the wall there. But he is also on a fresh set of tough tyres, so he will be able to go to the end of this race without any more pits. Brighton is now battling Marmite as well. Marmite on the medium compound of tyres. Brighton on a worn set of softs, so it will be close between these two. Will Marmite be able to to get to make a move? Sorry. Not quite there. Brighton just having a bit too much speed in the Ferrari there. As we see Rob and Kazzy battling it out now as we come along the pit straight. Let's have a quick look back at the at the first couple of corners, Kazi just goes a bit wide. Rob carries so much more speed coming onto the pit straight. As you can see, Rob wanting to try and get round the outside of Kazi there. Let's have a quick look back to see what's happened. As you can see, Rob just coming out there. Ooh, looks to me like there's a bit of contact. Let's have a quick replay of that yet again. Rob is on the inside going into this corner.
clean as you like for Rob and Kazzy is just unfortunately pushed a bit wide because of that there. Great stuff from Rob and Kazzy. Really good battle from these two throughout the course of this race. And Rob just managing to squeeze out ahead of Kazzy and take back his first position from the first laps of this race. You see Mikey just behind behind them, over 13 seconds behind these two. The one stop working out marvellous, marvellously for both Rob and Kazzy in front. We can just see a flashing of the lights there from Kazzy. I wonder if that's just because of his pad. As they come flying down the back straight now. Ooh, you can see Rocket Man and Racer now battling. Let's have a quick replay of that coming up to there. Rocket Man, you can see, drifting it through this entire mountain section now, clipping the wall there. Racer getting a good run. And unfortunately, just gets it a bit wide. You can see him drifting it through that final corner there as they come side by side. Let's see. Let's have a quick look as we see Racer now manages to get in front. Rocket Man's still on the inside. Again, just a bit of a bit of a dirty move there from these guys. Let's have a quick look back as well. You can see Racer is ahead of Rocket Man up until this point. Rocket Man just trying to move on the inside, but unfortunately just takes Rock Racer out. There's n there was no space. He was a bit further back than usual. Doesn't look to be there. Unfortunately, not the cleanest of moves from there. As Racer now falls into the clutches of JD now. Only just, unfortunately just getting a little bit aggressive here. But still great racing by these guys here. The but they will be racing to the end as they are both on the softer compound of tyres as Rob has managed to open out a one and a half second gap over Kazzy. Rob responding to the medium tyres a lot better than Kazzy. And you can see just that little bit of tyre wear is better on the Porsche than on the Ferrari playing to Rob's advantage here and managing to open a gap here on this lap. A lot of superb action here today as we have a look further down the field as we see guards who must have pitted in yeah, this lap, the lap before, is now down in 10th place and is on them soft, soft tyres. Will he be able to catch the battle between Wrighton and Marmite at the front of the grid? You can see how worn them soft tyres are for Wrighton. I think he would have benefited much more from a two-stop here today rather than trying to last out those, set, those sets of hards. may be able to mount a challenge you can see just the Magan has no pace in a straight line and he Marmite is not able to close up that much ground to right in front but you can see in the braking zone how much more the Magan is able to turn in and just the braking of of that Magan really showing its head there as we have a quick flick back to the guys in front Mikey still 13 14 seconds behind the leaders now but we can see Jay just in the background actually managing to make a bit of ground here on Mikey and moving within two seconds of the Magan. That could be a good battle towards the end of the race. These are both on the medium set of tyres. Mikey having the better of the two lives in them tyres, but Jay looks to be very quick around here today. So let's see if he's able to capitalise on this position now. So you see Racer just trying to hunt down Rocket Man yet again. And you can see Rocket Man and Racer only two and a half seconds behind the guys in front. As they are on the soft compound of tyres.
they might be able to catch the guys in front. It's going to be a big ask for Rocketman and Racer to catch up to the leading pack though. See Ryan and Marmite still just behind Ryan. You can see there's a 9.5 second gap. Between both Ryan and JD now. The field very spread out now. There's a front two guys. Oh, actually, we've had a change for the lead. Kazi managing to get past Rob. Let's have a quick replay of that and see if it's made a major change. Yeah, Kazi just managing to get done through on the back straight and slotting up the inside of Rob there. Clean as you like for Kazi. Let's see if there's any challenge. Nothing on the pit straight, but let's see if Rob can manage to make a challenge coming along this front straight here. Good job by Kazi managing. I wonder if Rob's made a mistake at some point during this these couple of laps as he looked to be maintaining a gap to Kazi. Only time will tell as he come up to the penultimate lap of this race. It is still all to play for. Oh, Kazi just going wide of that second corner there. Just allows Rob to just close up that little bit more see how much more braking speed and closing speed of the Porsches compared to the Ferrari. Yeah, my thoughts exactly hit me. An uncharacteristic mistake for Rob, but proves he, is, he has a percentage of human left in him after all. see the tyre life of Kazi and Rob. There's no comparison. You can see the tyre life of that Porsche is so much better compared to the Ferrari. And hopefully Rob might be able to capitalise it on the last few laps of this race. As you come down through Skyline, Rob having a very nice run out of there. And might be able to mount a challenge on Kazi. Very similar to what Kazi did before. Closing up. Under a tenth now. Rob pulls to the inside. No, he thinks better. Thinks better of it. Both hard on the brakes coming in to the left, tight left hander into the next right hander. Coming on to the final corner of this lap. It's going to be an excellent race for these two. Ooh, Kazi just goes wide. Just gets a bit on the grass coming into the break zone, that allows Rob to have a bit more of a run. Kazi moves defensive, Rob moves again to the inside. Ooh, Kazi just shutting the door on Rob there. Really aggressive defending for Kazi, but he has compromised his line, and that allows Gar and that allows Rob to get right up alongside. Which of these cars will have the better straight line speed? It's going to be a brilliant final lap. Kazi just on the inside. Well, he managed to keep it clean. Ooh, Kazi just goes a bit wide. Looks like he can just get the tail out there, and Rob has to back out. Really unfortunate there. Let's have a quick look at, at the back. Mikey, one and a half seconds ahead of Gemini there. Rocket Man also managing to close up to the back of Gem. Let's see if he can hold off Rocket Man for the last half of this race as well as Rob looks to be ooh looks like Rob might have made a quick mistake there let's have a quick look at the replay and see if we can see anything there ah oh, he just gets it wide one of the hardest corners to get right in this race and he just unfortunately just loses so much time and it's now over one and a half seconds behind Kazi now despite having the fresher rubber of the two this looks to be the battle for the la for fourth place now. Gemini in the McLe in the Porsche, sorry. And we also have Rocket Man on the softer compound of tyres in the Ferrari. But the tyre life of Jay is a lot nicer than that Ferrari. But the Arkham Oh as Jay gets it wrong. Huge drift there. Unfortunately he does not manage to save it. Just gets it wrong. 
He has had trouble with Skyline throughout this entire race and unfortunately it comes to an end as well. Just getting a bit wrong and the Porsche stepping out and unfortunately he's not able to save it this time round. Really unfortunate for Gemini there as he now sits in 7th place. There's Racer and JD moving ahead there. Really unfortunate for Jay. As we see, Kazi actually managing to stay ahead of Rob. Just missed that at the end there, but Kazi coming across in first place. Rob in second place. Mikey with a brilliant drive yet again on an ounce of fuel, running on vapors on that McGann coming home in third place. Rocketman coming home in fourth place. Racer in fifth. JD just behind him with a great race in the sixth place. Gemini, well, unfortunate mistake. Really could have had a lot better in that race, but coming home in seventh place. Gad, his teammate, coming across in ninth. Racer's Edge are inseparable at this moment in time. Marmy coming across in ninth. Wright coming across in tenth. As we wait for the rest of these guys to finish these, this race now. So really unfortunate. I think an incident will be looked at after this race. We did manage to catch a ro an incident between Rocketman and Racer on stream. No doubt there will be a steward's inquiry for that because it looked to be a very late move from Rocket Man and unfortunately just taking out Racer unfortunately just on that racing line giving them both nowhere to go so no doubt there will be an inquiry into that after this race. So we see Josh unfortunately not able to have a great race this time around for this race and unfortunately that NSX not doing him justice here in 11th place and Tej also crossing the line in 12th place after a couple of early incidents in this race and unfortunately the strategy not paying out for him coming home in 12th place there brilliant victory for Kazi hard fought battle for Kazi there and manages to fend off the robot chameleon alien this time around good victory for Kazi and let's have a quick look at the race results yet again this time around Kazi coming home in first place and manages to fend off Rob in sec who also finishes in second place he did take pole, Rob, but unfortunately could not. He could not uh, hold off Kazi for the rest of this race. Unfortunately, finishes in second place, but still a great job for Rob, proving again why he is the reigning champion of this league. We have Mikey in third place. A great race by him. Good strategy as well. Just managing to make that McGann work. Same as last season. Great job from him. Rocketman coming across in fourth place. And Racer behind him in the two. In the two Ferraris there. Good job from him. No doubt there will be some controversy between them two. After this as well. And JD just behind Racer coming across the line as we saw in 6th place. Jay unfortunately just on the last lap coming into Skyline. This Porsche just stepping out as he was on. As he was really trying to defend hard against Rocket Man. Unfortunately he just stepped out a bit too much. Was not able to collect it. And unfortunately was not able to keep hold of his position there. Gad just behind him in 8th place. 10 second gap between the two teammates there. Ninth place for Marmite, 10th for Wrighton. Unfortunately, not able to capitalise on his good starting position. Unfortunately, finishing in 10th place. Josh in 11th, Tej in 12th, and Sean in 13th position there. Great stuff from Kazi, Rob and Mikey there to secure the podium. Great stuff from them guys there. As we are now going to move on to the sprint race. I believe.
and there is the sprint race settings up now so this is just a battle to the finish a five lap sprint race of Barthurst no tools bars no pitting no fuel no tire wear race to the finish and it is reverse grid I believe it may be reverse grid same as same as last season and there we go just confirming that there as well so it is going to be reverse grid for the sprint race here today hopefully you guys are enjoying the racing so far to all you guys in chat Yeah, just getting as much practice as possible unfortunately just getting a bit wide there yet again the mountain section in looks to be incredibly difficult for this Ferrari here today especially during a race scenario and you can see the amount of sliding and tyre smoke from Kazi there the Ferrari not, doesn't look to be too best suited for Barthurst uh, he knows he's being watched as the flick of the lights there and we are at a bit of a slippery o'clock here with clouds moving over the sky here in Bathurst this time around for the sprint race. So it should be really good to see. And of course I believe this is going to be a rolling start this time around for this race. So hopefully there won't be any T1 shenanigans. Unless somebody misses their breaking point or etc etc. Let's have a quick look back. Hopefully it should be a rolling start, hopefully. I'll just have a quick ask in the chat there. a little bit of screen time here as he goes flying past the main straight up into the mountain section now. Are you going to be able to make it hippy if you're still in chat by the way? Let us know if you are able to make it. Oh, 
have to admit as well that it's a lovely livery on that NSX. I have a soft spot for the NSX already. So that's a lovely livery complementing it nicely there. A little bit of blue, a little bit of white, a little bit of pink. I like it. Good livery there. This Cali sets the fastest lap of the session so far with a 211.2. Showing you the difference there between having tyre and fuel there and not having them at all. So we're only able to see low and mid to 2 minutes 12 second laps. For the fastest laps of the qualifying, you see how much quicker some of these guys are able to go when no tyres and no fuel is considered. Third place winner of the feature race. start here. So you might even manage to go to third quickest. Let's have a quick look at right now who unfortunately did not manage to pick up the best result. After the feature race hopefully he can make it up in the sprint. Here we go, starting with the final now. So again, just to reiterate, a five lap sprint race with no tyre wear, no fuel wear, racing softs. But it is a rolling start with reverse grid of the previous feature race. So as we see, we see T. John Poole followed by Josh, Wrighton, Marway, Gad, J. JD, Racer, Rocketman, Mikey, Rob and Kazi bringing up the rear in both place there. Come, on. Come along to the start line now. just behind him getting a good start there. Hello Joker, good to see you in the chat buddy. Hopefully you are enjoying the racing so far. Looks like Josh might be able to mount a challenge on the Tej this time around. No, does not manage to pull alongside him and unfortunately does not manage to get that position there as right and just goes slightly wide in the background there. We can see the two Razor's Edge racing Porsches as well. Looking to pick up any scraps that may happen as Josh goes wide at that corner and allows Teej to open up a bit of a gap there, coming up the first bit of the mountain section. Let's have a look at the back here as Mikey, Rob and Kazzy all battling now. Rob and Kazzy just managing to get ahead. Ooh, a bit of contact between Kazzy and Mikey. 
Looks like Kazzy did not allow Mikey enough room there and almost gets spun out in the process with Rob managing to stay ahead of Kazzy. Mikey just unfortunately getting left out to dry there by these two. Big battle between these guys at the start there as Rocket Man looks to have spun there. Let's have a quick look back to see what happened here. Looks like he's behind Racer at this point. Oh, a bit of a domino effect there and just cannot save it. Let's have a quick quick look back there and unfortunately just managed to go back into, into last position there. Unfortunately, as unfortunate for him. Just looks like a bit of a domino effect there happening between for him. And unfortunately, he is worse off out of it. But you can see Gad now being challenged by Racer and JD. 4-6 players. Racer looks to go on the inside of Gad. Gad having the better of the brakes. As we see somebody else... There's a yellow flag there, I'm not sure if anybody else has went off the track. Let's have a quick look back down further in the field. Oh, as we see, Josh, really unfortunate for him. Let's have a quick look. Just gets the breaking point all wrong and goes, unfortunately, goes straight across into the sand. Really unfortunate for Josh there. Looks like he's picked up some damage as well. He will be coming in and looks like he'll be coming into the pits now. ZT's just managing to keep that first place. Really unfortunate for Josh there. Looks like he just managed to miss that breaking point. And cut straight across both the grasses there. Really unfortunate. As we see now, right now, because of that, moves up into second place with Marmite right behind him in third. You also see Rob now. Look at Rob, he's managed to move up to fifth place. How in the hell has that happened? Both Rob and Kazzy managing to move up into 5th, 7th and Mikey behind him in 8th place. Well, we have to have a look at the replay for that. We have to have a look at what happened there because these guys were 2 seconds behind the main path there. So we'll have to have a look at what happened here as now Gad is being challenged by Kazzy here. Oh, really risky overtaking spot for Kazzy, but somehow managed to make it work. Really risky from Kazzy to try and get past Gad there. Good defensive job by Gad still, though, to keep Racer behind him as well. Just falling a little bit behind Kazzy, unfortunately not getting the benefit of the slipstream. As Racer comes up behind him in that slipstream, you can see how close that Ferrari is to the Porsche. Opting to go for the inside line for this corner, he will be on the outside coming into the tight left. Racer hard on the brakes again. Will he manage to make the corner? No, he just gets it wide. He's across the grass, almost collects guard, but stays out of the way. Unfortunately, will he lose another position to JD behind him here? Looks like he will. Fortunate for Racer there, just falling back into ninth position there. Just again, another Racer that's getting it wrong, coming out of the fast back straight and getting and going across the grass there. To see Wrighton and TJ now battling for the lead. Let's see if we can see a pass from Wrighton here. Ooh, looks like. Looks like TJ might have just gotten a bit wrong coming into the first corner and Wright managed to pass him on the front straight. He managed to get himself into first place. But the battle is not over yet. We've only done two laps of this, three laps of this race remaining as we enter the halfway point now. So we see Jay also managing to move ahead of Marmite, managing to catch up there. Jay managing to move ahead of Marmite. through this downhill section of Barthurst. You can see both Jay and Marmite actually catching back up to the front two here. You see both of them drifting it through Skyline there. And the pack has closed right back up here. 
Oh, as you can see, Jay now right in the slipstream of TJ. Will he be able to defend? TJ opts for the outside and then the inside for the tight left. Jay will have the nose in front. They're both hard on the brakes. Looks like Jay gets it a bit wide. Will he manage to collect it? He manages to take his line. He manages to get around the outside of TJ. Great work by Jay there. But TJ is coming back through on the inside. Ooh, looks like there's a bit of contact there between the two. Let's have a quick replay of that. Oh, and the ghosting at an unfortunate time there. Unfortunately holds up Rob behind him as well. Let's have a quick look at this now. Yeah, just not enough room going into that corner. Really unfortunate for these guys. As they were both running a great race, but it looks like TJ has waited up for, for Jay there as well. Oh no. Oh, it looks like TJ... See the disconnect there from that. It was really unfortunate there. It was an unfortunate race. Fortunate to come together for them two there. As Kazi now inherits the third position as Rob has actually moved down into fifth place because of that incident. Kazi has managed to move up into third place. Mikey now coming up to the back of JD. Right now, managing to move up a two-second lead because of that in because of that incident there, as Rob also manages to overtake Jay for fourth place. Really good job by Kazi though to manage to move back up into third place. So we are on the penultimate lap of this race. Jay in 5th place, Guards, JD and Mikey now all battling here. You can see both of the guards just trying to catch up to the Porsche on the straight despite being in the slipstream. McGann's unbearably slow in a straight line. Goes, Mikey goes wide in that corner, looks like the downforce is not quite working in that thing. Around them couple of corners there, you will have dirty tyres for the next few corners and might put them into the clutches of Rocket Man behind them. Looks like Racers also came up with an incident. Oh, it looks like he's just dropped off the back there. Looks to me like an incident as we did see a puff of grass there. And that. A few incidents in this sprint race here today. JD now challenging guard. The Porsche just managing to out drag the Magan. JD opting to try and stick it round the outside. Does he have the drive coming in? You've got the inside corner line coming in the next few corners. Really great driving by JD and guard there to make it round too wide. It's one of the tightest, most difficult sections of the track. Great driving to make it stick and a great pass by JD to move him into 6th place there. Really great stuff. That might be battle of the, of the round so far between these two. Great stuff. But again, it's not over yet. We still have half a lap to go in this race. And we know how slow that McGann is on a straight line, so Gard, if he has a clean mountain section here, might be able to mount a challenge back on JD. Looks like JD actually did manage to get, gain a bit of time to Gard coming through that section, but just loses it by clipping the wall. Oh, but look at the drive that JD has coming out of that corner. Great stuff by JD, and he's managed to break the slipstream behind him. question is, will Gard and will Mikey be safe? Coming in the next few corners from the slipstream, looks like Rocket Man behind is looking very racy. Wants to try and move ahead of Mikey now. Rocket Man very late on the brakes, manages to get past Mikey. 
managed to move through on the outside. Coming in with the last few corners, we come across the line now, right with a great rain coming home in first place. Marmite in second, Kazi just beating Jay, who manages to get pa back ahead of Rob. Coming across the line there, JD in sixth place, a great battle with Gad and Rocket Man at the end, who comes in eighth place. Mike Yu just loses out in ninth place there. Great battling by these guys for the last couple laps. Great stuff by them guys here today. As you see Josh rounding the final corner, unfortunately not a good weekend for him in that NSX. Just a couple of incidents just put him behind the pack yet again and Racer also with a couple incidents again just putting him right behind the rest of the pack here. But some really but some really great racing on show here today as it looks to be on put it looks to be on ghost mode. Spacer comes across the line now. Great stuff by all the racers there. Now we'll definitely be saving that replay this time around. Great stuff by Wrighton to keep it together for this race, showing that a Ferrari was a good car to use around this track. Let's have a quick save of that replay so we can have a look at it in a little bit. So just to recap on the results yet again, a great result for Wrighton finishing in first place. Managed to capitalise after the poor, unfortunately poor feature race he had at the start of this weekend. Marmite again as well, finishing a bit lower down but managing to come home in second place. So a great job for, Mar for Marmite, scoring two good points hauls. But I think the, m the main point scorer of the day is Kazi with a win and a third place. Meaning that despite Racer not having, unfortunately not having a, the best race this time round, it will reca recoup some points there. Jay in fourth place for Razor's Edge Racing, a good result for him. That is the result he deserved, securing his fourth place in the end and managing to get home take home one fourth place from this weekend. Rob in fifth place unfortunately just could not keep up with some of these guys here today in this sprint race despite that uh, but was making use of the incidents that happened earlier in the race and managing to, to take home a still a very strong fifth position. JD a consistent drive from him yet again with another middle of the road pack skewing some very solid points for him and finishing in sixth place Gad in 7th place as well, just having a good consistent race finishing 7th place. Rocket Man not managing to move quite as far up the field as he would have liked, staying in 8th place. Mikey unfortunately the same again, not managing to move up the field too much and unfortunately finishing in ninth place. Josh in 10th place and Racer coming in 11th place to round off the grid there. And of course we had TJ early in the race as well. But yeah, really good start of this championship. That was some excellent racing on show there throughout the entirety of this. Really good show from a lot of these guys. Yes, I did see that, Rob. I did see that. It was very unfortunate for you there. But still, two very good results for yourself. Two very good results indeed. Second place and a fifth is nothing to be disappointed about at all. But yes, that was um, unlucky. It was just from the earlier incident um, with TJ and Gemini that unfortunately caused that. And yeah, it was very unlucky for yourself, Rob. Did manage to cut, uh, just catch that at the end before cutting to the replay. Uh, no probs, Mike. He just hit the grass there. Fair enough. So we had right and come across the line in first. Then we had Marmite and then Kazi as well in third place.
So now, um, I will ask if anybody in chat does have the replay saved and shared, maybe, so I can take a quick look at that feature race. Unfortunately, I did forget to, to save the feature race for this week. Um, so if anybody does have that one shared... Please go ahead and do so and let me know in the chats, please. Oh, look at all them. Look at all them. Red Scum, that's a great name. Thanks for seal for that one, even though I haven't raced in the FIA so far at all, but I hope to change that this week. I don't know what it is, actually, while we're waiting for um, Racer to kindly share the replay for us, let's have a quick look at the um, the FIAs, because the FIAs are going on right at this moment. Because so I, I don't know myself, GR4 at Major West, hmm, feeling. Oh, not that. Yep, four-wheel drive, Lancer, Subaru. And what is it this time? It's GR4. Ah. Oh. GR4 at Willow Springs. Ah. Oh. You know what? Maybe I won't do this round. Hmm. Maybe I won't do this round. Ugh, I hate Big Willow with a passion. Oh my god, all of these all these are in the wrong order. All of these races are in the wrong order. These two are fine, these front two. That them two you can get away with. GR4, Big Willow, eh. Fair enough. This is wrong though. Gardens 2, which arguably I do like more than Gardens 1, but GR4 it in Lagos instead of GR3? Ugh. And then GR4 Nordlifer instead of Magior? Bad job there from Polyphony. All of these ones should be the other way around for me. That should be a GR3, GR4, GR3, GR4 for me. But never mind. Enough about that. Let's focus more on the GR4s. So, Race has kindly shared that. Hopefully, it will appear in the activity feed, which it has. So, let's have a look at this now. Looks like I have, have some connection issues between Kazi and Mikey during that race as well, which is really unfortunate. So during the sprint race as well, I will say that you and, well you didn't come together obviously, but you and Mikey shown like you were clipping into each other a bit, so that might have been why. Because on the stream it looks like um, Kazzy was squeezing Mikey into the wall, but that clearly wasn't the case because you, you, you weren't seen on each other's screens, which is really odd. I haven't heard of that issue in a while. The only other issue I've heard of that is when I couldn't connect to Cards Fan. That used to be the issue with us two, but apart from that, nothing else really. But while we wait for this feature race to load, if anybody has any incidents or anything they would like to look at for uh, during these replays, just go ahead and then. Um, Just go ahead and post them in the chat, and I will gladly have a look for you. Uh, we will re be replaying um, these starts here, so it should be good fun. Yeah, it was really unfortunate, Jay. It was. It's. It's always really tight coming into that, and it, it literally did, did look like, even though it clearly wasn't the case. But it looked like TJ like slapped you into the wall, even though it was the lightest of touches. Just the way like it came off of him, just because it, it's such a tight corner. 
it looked like TJ slapped you off the corner when it clearly wasn't the case, which is really unfortunate. But then again, that's just the fucking stupid hitboxes in this game, as you say. But I don't think there's too much to look at here. There will be one incident I will want to look at in particular. It's mainly the sprint race I want to have a quick look at, to be honest. But yeah, you were quite unfortunate in that one, Jay. But still, good recovery to finish fourth, though. Just unfortunate because you could have had a much better position in both them races there. But still a great job done by you. Now, let's have a quick look. I will point out as well that there are no teams... That there are some cars that, some, that will probably not appear in this championship. So we actually have one which is surprising, which is nobody opted to use the McLaren in this championship. There's going to be no Citroens in this championship, and there's going to be no Alphas in this championship. All the other cars are being used. So the Ferrari, the Porsche, the Megane, the NSX. Yeah, so it's just four cars that are being used. I feel like I'm missing one other one, but I might be incorrect. Well, let's have a quick look at the start here. So we're, we're sitting on Racer's perspective here. Is he alongside Rocket Man on the grid? Let's have a quick look at. Looks like Racer was just a tiny bit slow off the line there, but nothing too major. Just managed to get the drive on the outside of the corner. Yeah, really clean, really clean start by these guys. If I'm honest, really clean. Let's have a quick look further down. Let's have a quick look from Gad's perspective, who was at the back of the field in the start of this one. Bit of wheel spin for him. NSX not getting off to a good start for Josh, but then again, that NSX really isn't a good car off the line anyway. Yeah, really clean at the start for it. was a really good really good job done by all for the start of the feature race. Really clean on the first corner. Let's see if anything happened coming up the second one. Ooh, you can see Marmite just up in front there. Just getting a bit on the grass. But yeah, not very not many incidents at all. Oh, there's a bit of contact between Josh and Gad there, but nothing too major. I think that was just more circumstantial, more than anything, to be honest. But yeah, really good start by these guys. Really clean, really competitive. It was good stuff. So let's skip ahead a bit further into the race. To this here. You can see Rob and Kazzy battling up, up top there. And this is when it was like a five horse race at one point for the first couple of laps. Hey Danny buddy, how you doing? You can see the cars behind them there. If you come across the lane, you can see there's like nothing between all of these guys now. So let's skip a bit further ahead. There's no real incidents on them first few laps, so it's really good stuff. You can see the battle between Wrighton and Marmite that lasted the entire race, actually. They were, these two were dueling from lap one, from or lap two, pretty much. So let's have a quick look at this and see what happens. So you can see Racer was challenging Rob for the first couple of laps as well before he actually managed to build the gap. I was going to have had a Team Crazy 1-2 at some point during this race, but unfortunately it did not, was, did not happen in the end. That's 
when Jay comes into the pits. So, quick view of Mike Ethan, who actually managed to get to the front of the field, with Marmite right behind him as well. Two McGann's do, doing really well in this race. Lap 11, okay, racer. From See, Sean's in the pits there. That one there, which you didn't know about. Let's have a look what happened to you. So, Rocket Man's right there. This is on the inside there. That wasn't a. So, both Ryan and Rocket Man went by, but Racer waited, so that's fine. Wasn't too much there because that's when Wrighton goes into the pits because unfortunately his strategy didn't quite work out from this race. There's nothing too much here though. So there's a little tap there from Rocket Van, but that's nothing too much and yeah, just. But you can see from racer's perspective here, it's tight coming through there anyways, but racer has nowhere to go into there, so yeah, that's fair enough. Yeah, that one's fair enough, but weighted, not a problem. Don't need to look at that incident anymore. Definitely wasn't purpose. It definitely wasn't on purpose. You can see a racer and rocket man both coming in the pits there. As you can see, but you can see the strategy from like Jay and Mikey actually working out to a T there because although Jay had the pit once again. You can see, you can see how well the strategy worked out for him in the end, because he was ahead of both Racer and Rocket Man, even though he didn't take as much fuel. Actually, no, he did take. He took the exact same amount of fuel. So it's actually a really good job by Jay there. So let's see if there's anything else. This is where the, the one I caught on stream. Let's just switch to this wheel for the meantime. So you see, to be fair, Racer, you two were both hammering it through the rest of this. I believe this is the one. and he's turning really hard in there. Let's have a quick look at this. He manages, manages to make it work there, kind of. Just manages to keep it through on the a little bit of a tap there, but nothing too drastic. It's a hard braking zone there. That's all fine. 
and then he hits the wall here. Yeah, and he goes wide, doesn't he? Yeah, it's pretty much a drag race down this entire street, so let's have a quick look. So he pulls back into the slipstream after short shifting. No, that's clear as day for me. I understand your frustration, racer, um, but with all due respect, I, I know you're very frustrated with, because of that, but if we can just not have that in particular in the future, we can sort this out off track. That's all, but enough, but enough about that. This, this to me, is, yeah, there's, there's no question. You can see, Rocket Man's pumping his brakes. He's not even trying, he's trying to take the inside line there. Even though he's nowhere near the corner. He's pumping his brakes, that's the only reason why he's a long side racer, and he just takes him out. So after, and then after taking him out, he then drives on through. And then he's really defensive at the next corner. No, he didn't. He, like, at this point, Rocket Man had the pace to more than like challenge race at cleanly. I mean that is an early breaking point in itself as well so again it's just and then JD capitalizes because of it and manages to move ahead of racer and then Rotten Man goes on and manages to get ahead of the both of them yeah it's just Again, it's just, it's just a pattern. It's just it's just a common theme. It's just it's. I don't know. It just look it just looks to me that it's the same as last season, which we want to try and avoid as much as possible, and it's the same thing that's happened again. So. And then because of it, Rocket Man's then carried on and he's caught the pack of heads and he's got the result because of it. Yep, I would agree. I don't think there's anything else that really needs to be looked in that race. That one is I think is fairly open and shut. That that was Rocket Man's fault and then he took the position anyways, so I don't really think and I don't really think anything else needs to be said about that. It was a bad move and th they both lost out because of it, but then not only did he not only did he um take Racer off the track, he also went ahead of him, which is a big no no, if I'm honest. So but anyway, enough about that. We're Oh, of course, yeah, I forgot about that. Never mind, you are saved because we're onto the sprint race now. This is the one I wanted to have a look at more, to be honest, Jay. Because, um. This is the stuff where the action happened. So you're safe for the meantime. I would agree. I think, um. I think a few of us need to have a, a bit of a talk about. Um, that in particular. Um, but we'll 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 leave that until after. It doesn't need to be brought up in this stream. Honestly, TJ, don't don't bring it hard on yourself. You didn't do anything wrong. 
if, if I'm honest. Yeah, d as Jay said, I don't think he did anything wrong, mate. It was just really unfortunate. It, to be honest, it looks like it was just a, a really stupid incident, if I'm honest, because it, it looked like you hit Jay so much more than what you probably actually did. And despite that, you were leading up until that point, which is really unfortunate. But I, I wouldn't take it to heart, mates, really, but let's have a quick look. So nothing really happened in the first few laps. You can see Mikey actually there. Rob Magic move ahead of Mikey there, straight away. Let's have a quick look, look at that, actually. Oh, you can see just Mikey just really gets the bad start position. He's right on the apex, yeah. God, that's an awful start position. So, note to anybody watching, if you're starting in a, in a rolling start on Bathurst, 10th place is the worst position to be on the grid. And then Mikey tries to come back. Does he manage to get it or not? Rob's on the inside to this corner. No, Mikey backs off. Good driving, though. So Rob managed to get ahead of Mikey pretty much instantly because of that. And that's why they were so separated at the start. See, you can see, yeah, you can see here, that's obviously why Kazi and Mikey couldn't sit, because this is what I was seeing on stream. I, was, I thought Kazi was pushing Mikey into the wall there, which is really stupid. But so obviously it was just Kazi and Rob battling at this point, or vice versa, Rob and Mikey battling. So what happened on this start here? Because this is so we have Guard at the front of this pack, JD behind him, Race and Rocketman also behind them too as well. A little bit of a tap there, just a complete domino effect. Ah, it's unfortunate. Real domino effect there, unfortunately. Right, guys, keep it out of the chat, please. No need, keep it out of the chat. It's going to be dealt with after the race. Keep it out. I don't don't care. I'm not having it. Keep it out. So let's have just a, I just want to have a quick look at that again because yeah, it's just unfortunately. Guy just didn't have the best position because he's trying to defend there. Guy's just trying to defend there, and unfortunately just gets a bad run. Yeah, it's just really close to see, and then Rocket Man in this instance just couldn't save it, and then ends up going around as a result. Yeah, unfortunate, unfortunate. Unfortunately, JD just gets it wrong through Skyline Guard and Racer look to go through. I think is it Racer that goes through on, on JD here? God, with the speed of that um, Ferrari, even with McGann is in slipstream, the McGann stands no chance on the straights. So. Unfortunately, I, w I want to just try and see what happened to Josh here. Ah, oh, just stepped out. So unfortunate for Josh, man. And then the stupid, yeah, really unfortunate for Josh there. I won't hinder too much on that, but such a shame, man. Such a shame. Car just steps out for no reason. Really, really sorry for you there, Josh.
great battle between um, these three here though. We've seen that though. Look at the look at the, the dummy that racer pulls on guard here. So it goes to the outside, leaves the gap, swings it back to the inside. And they don't even touch. And then look at this. So you've got So that's how Rob managed to get through. Yeah. That's just a racing incident, to be honest, because um, going try it, I mean, going three wide in the, into the first corner is just not going to happen. I think you were all late in the... Yeah, there's nowhere to go there. And JD unfortunately loses out because of it. <laughs> you, can, you can see Mikey and Kazzy. Look at this, man. That's stupid. So obviously, Racer is seeing this. So Racer is seeing, like, Kazzy just forcing his way past Mikey on his screen, but obviously, Mikey and Kazzy cannot see each other on theirs, so. It's quite funny how both Mikey and Kazzy actually were running completely even for the first lap of that race, which is quite funny. No, no, so on both of their screens, uh, Paul, they can't see each other, and so even the likes of, like, getting draft, like, slipstream from each other or anything like that, it's not effective. So, say if Kazzy was in front of Mikey by, like, two tenths, Mikey wouldn't get the slipstream from Kazzy because he's not on his screen. It's really dumb. It's really, really dumb. So that's how you guys managed to move right back up, so Rob just managed to make a good a good move for the situation. He was just on the inside of a racing incident. Ah, and then he gets the brakes a bit wrong. Ah, fair enough. Yeah, exactly, Paul. But um, luckily, usually when that happens, usually it's... Both pe it's both people that feel the effect of it, not just one, so luckily it's not really affected. Which is fortunate, to be honest. So let's have a quick move ahead. Let's uh, keep an eye on this battle. side there though from um, Mikey. So I just I just wanna have actually have a look at what happened here. Is on the inside. You know what it is, Teach? I don't think you've done anything wrong there, if I'm honest, mate. You were actually coming into the apex, you were alongside Jay. If anything, yeah, I think that's a racing incident, to be fair. Yeah, and Teach does wait. Really unfortunate. You know what it is, Teach? I don't think you've done anything wrong there. You had the better run out that corner, and actually in the braking zone, if you look, you were just ahead of Jay in there. So you actually had the better line and braking brakes through there.
Oh yeah, I oiled the corner, did I guard? Yeah, of course, shut up, man. So if you look from TJ's perspective, if anything, Jay turns in slightly too early. But it's nothing that couldn't have... It's... Yeah, you, you barely touched. Because at this point, Jay's almost still trying to turn into the apex, I think, at that little bit there. But that's, that's just a clear racing incident for me. It's really unfortunate. Yep, yeah, come on. Just... Lap, lap it up, assholes. Come on. Blame me for everything. You still had the inside, you didn't have anywhere to go. If anything, I think Jay turns slightly in a bit too early while while Teej was still there. Because it. Even though there's nowhere to go for Teej, there's nowhere for any of for both of them to go, to be fair. I think if Teej had managed to. Yeah, I think T just had a bit too much speed to try and make that happen, if I'm honest. But apart from that, there's, you did nothing wrong there, Teach, I think. Because you were ahead at this point, and you were turning in. That's not your fault, mate, if I'm honest. If anything, I, th if anything, I think Jay might have been the cause of his own incident there, but... Again, racing incident for me, and then... That's just stupid. That's just so unfortunate for Rob. Jay comes back on and it's just like... Just like, yeah, I'm just gonna unghost you now. Literally milliseconds. It's like, do do do, coming back on. No, no, no mind. I can guarantee you what's going through Rob's head at this point. He's going, let's oh, go. Oh, sweet, Jay's gone wide. Right, this is a couple, couple positions going to make up. Nope. He's gone, oh, what the fuck, game? Yeah. Beep, 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 beep. In a Scottish accent, of course. And then Kazi ma manages to make light of that and moves ahead. Oh, for fuck's sake. Terrible. Yeah, really unfortunate for Rob because of that. Really unfortunate, but yeah, I think apart from that, I don't think there's much else. Oh yeah, and then what happens here? Ah, uh, Jay just clips tiniest clip on the inside wall and Rob goes through. But luckily Jay did manage to get that. Jay did manage to get that position back in the end, which I will scour for to see where Jay passed him at the end as well. I didn't even see the battle between Marmite and Kazi at the end as well. Christ there was so much going on. I know that's what I'm gonna look at. You read my mind, Paul. That's exactly what I'm gonna have a look at now. Oh, Kazi actually managed to get past. Oh well, we'll watch these two battles. We'll watch um, Rob and Jem first, and then we'll have a look at the battle ahead as well. Let's watch it from Jay's perspective, shall we? did exactly the same. No way. So if you can imagine what was going through Rob's head this time, he's just going, right, I'll come through the mountain section. Ah, uh, you know what? I actually feel bad for Jay. He went off at that corner. You know what? Um, you know what? Let's just do that. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Balance has been restored. Come on, Jay, come through. There we go. Balance has been restored. Jay gets back to his fourth place. That's exactly what went through Rob's head. He's just such a kind person, you know. 
he let he did exactly the, he let exactly the same instance so Jay didn't feel as bad and then he let Jay pass that for that. Really good sportsmanship from Rob there. Nothing quite like it. So let's have a quick look here. So Kazi is still ahead, so it must be a late move or something else. Let's have a quick look. Tiny bit on the grass. Oh no! Oh wow, well saved though, Kazi, to be fair. That's really well done. on the grass. You know what it is though, Kazzy? That is incredibly well saved. The wall helped you like, but that's a really good save. So he's got... Oh, come on. Second place, second place. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. No, that was well saved, Kaz. And how close to Jay at the end here? Jay was just like, come on, come on, Porsche, come on. Nah, crap. Now, good stuff by all there, though. Yep, and I think that pretty much ends it, to be honest. That was, um, that was marvellous fun to do that again. Actually, while I'm there, how much room do I have left? 584? Ugh, I need to delete some replays again, man. God damn it. Uh, anyway. Yes, I believe um, Kazzy has sent a donation in there, so thank you very much, Kazzy, as well, for that donation. I'll have to have a look in the Discord to see what that one was. So, but uh, thank you very much for that. And yeah, I think with that, as it just comes very nicely to 4 o'clock on the dot, Hashtag fuck polyphony digital. There were some good races, a really good start to this season. And um, let's have a quick check actually for next week. What is the info for next week? Season info, what track is it? Ooh. So so in comparison, so this is this is basically race's edge racing right here. So we've got Bathurst, which Jay really likes and Gad hates. And next week, guess what? We're at Fuji. Yay! We're at Fuji. So now we have a track that Gad really likes and Jay hates. Much to Jay's delight, we are at Fuji. I mean, there's always the PayPal, Mikey. To be fair, I think that's what we're going to just recommend from now on, instead of doing Super Chats, just because of the crap that's happened with, with um, the YTs at the moment. But yes, apart from that, that was some really good fun. Really enjoyed watching that back again. So, thank you. That's all that's left, really, is to thank you guys for the chats. So we had a bunch of people in, in today. Jay, Paul, Kazzy, Mikey, Rob, Tej, Marmite as well. Hippie was in here earlier on. Yeah, some good stuff. So I think with that, all that's left is to close it out. Um, I'm not sure if there's anything else going on tonight. I think the rest of the day is free? Question mark. I can't remember if there's anything going on. I don't think there is. But I'm sure we will find out soon enough. And then t tomorrow we'll be back for Super Former again. And that will be starting at about 9 o'clock, same as every week. So yeah, look forward to that, and sh I'm sure we'll probably see you, you all later on today for something or other. So yeah, with that, thank you very much for watching this opening round of Season 3 of the GR4. 
So yeah, good stuff. And with that, we'll catch us next time. Goodbye.